Hey guys, it's me, Crazy Honda Chris at Randy Kill Honda in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And here behind me, I have a brand new 2025 Honda Pilot Sport. So let's show you all the cool standard features and functions right now. All right, so here we are right at the window sticker. You guys are welcome to pause the video right about here if you want to explore your own. Now up here, you guys can see it's going to be a 2025 Honda Pilot, all-wheel drive sport. On the right hand side talks about the fuel economy. We got 19 for the city, 25 for the highway with a combine of 21. Down on the bottom right hand corner is going to talk about the safety ratings. Right now it says to be rated. If we can get that to focus. I'm a little struggling today. There we are. You can see it's a US made product, Lincoln, Alabama. And then we got the list of the, all the standard features and functions, which we're going to try to cover today just for you guys. So you guys be fully aware of it before you're taking out on a test drive at your local Honda dealership. Now, it's going to be a platinum white pearl, the one that we're looking at right now today. You can see there's going to be a supply charge for selected colors. For example, this one's $455 more. I'll also throw some additional color options up there. Then also there's going to be a supply charge for that color, so you guys be fully aware of that, all right? We're going to close that right up. It comes down with two key fobs and remote start. To use your remote start, all you have to do is double tap lock, hold this button down for a few seconds. You're going to see the light's going to flash there. There you go. It received it. It starts up. The lights will flash again. Now it's on and running. The doors will remain locked. It runs for 10 minutes. Now, after 10 minutes, it will just turn right off. Or let's say eight minutes have passed. I need a little extra more time. I repeat the process, and then it will extend that. And then 10 minute intervals from right there, so it runs for the grand total of 18 minutes. If you play your cards correctly, you get pretty close to 20 minutes, all right? A third time, no, 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 you cannot do it a third time, it will not engage. The vehicle has to get turned on, then turn it off for the remote start to be available again, okay? Now you can simply turn it off by holding that button down again, and then it shuts everything right off, okay? Now, all your Honda sensing features come standard. I'm talking about your lane keep assist, adaptive cruise, forward collision, and road departure. So safety is pretty much just middle name. Now you have a 3.5 V6 in here with an automatic transmission. I'm going to throw horsepower and torque right up there so you guys know what you're playing around with. Now for your all-wheel drives, you're going to have a towing capacity of 5,000 pounds. Wipers are going to be right underneath the hood line. You have LED lights all the way around. That means your daytime running lights, your headlights, and then your fog lights down below. Now this nice little eyebrow right up here. It's going to be a nice black finish within this nice big Honda emblem up front. As we're talking about a nice gloss black finish, you're going to have a little black finish around here too. From that point, then we're going to come over here to this nice 20-inch alloy rims. I'm not part of the usual flyer for my videos. I was trying to hide from the wind, so please bear with me. But I'm going to take a step here off to the side, guys, so you can see the side profile of the vehicle. I'll also throw some exterior measurements up there so you know what you're playing around with how does it compare to other vehicles out in the market and most importantly to your current car will it fit in the garage let us know it down below in the comments all right now as we're checking out the side profile you can see the body colored handles we have a nice black finish around the windows a black mirror we have a nice gloss black roof rails up top and rear tinted windows all right so these are going to be a breakaway side mirrors if you need to fold these in you can and you're also gonna have blind spot information right here for your entry level so that's gonna be nice so blind spot information pretty much when a car is in your blind spot over here we're going 20 miles an hour faster and your blind spot will light up and then when you have your blinker on while well, it's in your blind spot it flashes and beeps at you i have a video showing you guys that in action if you guys are visual learners like myself so we'll fold that right in there gas tank when the car is unlocked guess what the gas door is unlocked you just push that right in it pops right open so no capless uh sorry it's a capless tank no cap to worry about fixing or replacing down the road so you're good to go it's a simple slide in and slide out now when the car is all locked up that's going to be locked too now we're going to come back here once again you have led tail lights this makes a bold statement to apply onto the brakes for safety of course all right so we have a nice massive kind of pilot action going on back here As we start from the bottom, we'll work our way up now. We've got a little chrome-tipped dual exhaust. Badge of honors you got going on. It's all-wheel drive. It's going to be in black. you got the Sport right here, so people know you're rocking out the Sport. Then, of course, we've got the Pilot badging going on. Then we have a backup camera, of course. It's going to be a multi-angle rear camera. I'll show you guys more of that from there. Then you have your release right over here. Now, you guys are going to notice it's going to have a uh, trunk bun right here. 
This is not to open and close your tailgate, okay? Well, this is designed for, let's say the car's all locked up, right? It's all locked up. I just want to unlock this hatch. And it locks that hatch for me. That's all it's for, okay? So now the rest of the doors will remain locked during that time. No one can get in those, all right? So I just want to point that out because I know that's going to be a common question. All righty. So with that being said, let's pop this bad boy open. So it comes down with carpet mats. I'm going to put these here off to the side so we can play around and do some more visual learning. So this is going to be with the third row seat up. Let's see what it looks like with it down. Now, of course, those center seats will fold down too. You got a little lid action here. You can pop this right open. It's going to be reversible too. So you got hard plastic, you got carpet. You can fold this down right down here if you wanted to. So if you have those up, you got groceries, things won't be rattling around from there. So we got a little unlock action. My fingers are a little cold, so let's see if I can do this. Gotta switch hands. There we go. Pops right open. You got those tools you need, jacks, emergency funnel, things like that for those unforeseen events. Snaps right back in. Box right up. Now your spare tire is gonna be under the vehicle, okay? Let's get down there and take a quick look. There she is. So, we have to pop this out and then ratchet right down, all right? Now uh, we'll put this right back up here. Third row C action, you got a couple cup holders, adjustable vents. Guess what? Couple cup holders, adjustable vent. Then we have some cursy tie downs off here to the side. So if there's anything back here, you don't want to be bouncing around, damaging the plastics, you are set for success. Third seat belt, if you ever need it, it's right up here. Nice and fastened right now, out of the way. To bring these seats right back up, simple, you can do it one-handed. Get that back on there. And then, these bad boys, Ta-da! We're good to go. Or we're almost good to go. Now you guys are gonna notice here's a release for the tailgate, and then you're gonna have this little button right here. So some people are gonna be asking, what is this button for? As you see, it has a little lock in next to it. So with this vehicle, you're gonna have to walk away auto lock feature. We're gonna to talk about that in here in a second. But let's just say everyone's out of the vehicle and I'm the last one, and this is the last door is gonna get shut, right? I can simply shut this, I can hit that button. It locks all the doors. So now I don't have to second guess did my doors lock or not or anything like that. There we go. I know I hit the lock button. I'm good to go. Now since I hit the lock button, let's find the key in my pocket. We're going to open this right up. Before we dive in, I'm going to throw some interior measurements so you guys know there's going to be enough room for your friends, pet, cargo, whoever's brave enough to tag along with you guys. Boom. Now you know the measurements and how it compares to you guys to other vehicles out there, right? Now with the sport trim, you're gonna have a nice little orange stitching. You can see that continue throughout the vehicle. The sport's gonna have a cloth interior. Nice little finishes going on. You're gonna have power windows, of course. And then we got little cup holders, little cubby action or tray action down below. Then we'll come right in here to see the interior. So once again, you're gonna have orange stitching. I'm gonna jump to the third row seat quick to access that. You have that little bun, and then here we are. Now, when people need to get out, they're gonna have their little bun too as well. So you're not waiting for people in the center. Let's put the seats to fold down. Whoop, there we go. All righty, so there's that right there. Quick for you guys, this bad boy will fold down. Pull that. So now we got a nice little armrest, little tray action, additional cup holders. Now to bring that back up, it's gonna be a lot challenging with one hand, you gotta pull that string, and you come over here and you pull this up, and then it locks right in place. Now for those that have car seats, I know the pain, I've been there a couple times, and it's actually easy and exposed to access these for those car seats. So you can accommodate if you have multiple car seats. 
Now, as you can see, we have the Honda's all season match in here. They do not come standard with the vehicle, but we have them in here. You can see how a nice high wall those are and a nice tight fit. All right. Now, as we come right over here, we're going to have some additional courtesy pockets. A family vehicle needs more of that. You never have enough space to hide stuff at. Adjustable vents, a couple USB C's down below to keep that one technology, a little charge, then another courtesy pocket. Now, the third seat belt right up here in the center. It's right up here. Got a little light action. All right, so we talked about a little bit about the smart entry system. So let's say we have the car all locked up. You get the key fob with you. It could be in your purse pocket or jacket. You walk up, put your hand in the handle, and it locks the door for you. You can set it up. Do you only want the driver's side door to unlock, or do you want all doors to unlock? Now, you can simply have the key fob with you still, and you get these little ridges down here. There we go. I select that. I walk away. The doors are locked though already, okay? So let me explain that again. Sorry, I get distracted with the car driving by. So once again, the car's all unlocked. I got my thumb, I put my thumb on the little ridges right here, locks the car doors, so I don't take my key fob out of my pocket and hit the lock button, okay? So that's gonna be nice. Now, if you accidentally leave your keys in the car, whoops, there we go, it happens, right? You hit the lock button, because you know it's a habit, you just didn't have a car, you know, that you just whatever, and then there we go. It registers, hey Chris, you left the key in the car, you hit lock on the door, you shut the door, you're accidentally locking your keys in the car, so I'm just gonna unlock for you. So that's pretty nice. Now another cool thing is the walk away auto lock feature. So let's say you have the key pod with you, and I get, and if the feature's on, I get 10 feet away from the car, it automatically locks all the doors. You never, ever have to second guess yourself. Did I lock my doors? Did I not? It's just, it's automatically locked, okay? We're gonna open up the driver's side door here quick. We're gonna take a quick look at this bad boy. What's it gonna be a cloth, orange stitching. You guys know about power windows. You got your power locks, your mirror selector between left and right, then the D-pad to adjust accordingly. And then you got your window lock button. Just cause you're getting young whippersnappers or misbehaved husband like to play with the windows, you can lock us out now. Now we got a little tray action, cup holders, some more tray action down below. We'll come right over here. So we're gonna have a nice power seating going on. So we got forward, you got back, you got a little tilt on the front half, you guys can see, raise and lower, recline, and then you got your lumbar support. So of course we're gonna have cloth interior, it's gonna continue throughout. It's gonna be a nice little stitch, kind of nice durable patterns going on in here. And then right down over here, you got pedals to A to B, and then hood release. So let's do the courtesy and pop that bad boy and show you some little things that you may want to know. All right, so here we are right underneath the hood. We're talking about horsepower and torque, stuff like that. But let's show you guys those little common courtesy stuff that you may do on your own. For example, the washer fluid's a nice blue cap, easy to find if you ever need to fill that bad boy up. What else is easy to find? Right here, bright orange is the dipstick there for the oil. You got the oil cap right over here. The battery is down below fuse box brake fluid and there we are anything else beyond that i'm calling someone to come save me but for those that have the capabilities and the skill and the know-how to work on their own vehicle let's do one more look over here for you guys now for more of those advanced questions you may have feel free to contact your local honda service center i'm sure they'd be glad to assist you guys and answer all those questions for you all right all righty let's uh jump up front All right, so here we are right inside the Honda Pilot now. Simply have the key fob with you guys. It can be right up there. It can be in your pocket, your purse, your jacket. You guys get the point just in the vehicle. Now to turn on the vehicle, you simply have to apply onto the uh, brake pedal. You'll see the push button start right here, lights right up. And there we are, we're fully on and running. Now over here on the left hand side, we got a little button action. It's gonna be for your traction control or your vehicle stability assist. So when you click and hold that in, it will turn that right off. You can see it's off. That's what's gonna keep you on the road. It simply applies the brakes as you need it, as you slip and slide. But if you get stuck in you know, deep mud or snow, stuff like that, you can turn that off so your tires will keep on spinning, all right? Now we have your telescopic wheel. You got a release right down there. Pull that bad boy down. You can push this in, you can pull it out. It goes down, it goes up. You guys get the point just as you see fit. And to lock that right back in place, there we go. Now you're gonna notice we have orange stitching on the leather wrapped wheel. 
you have all of your Honda sensing features over here on the right hand side. So the first one I'm going to talk about is going to be your traffic jam assist and then your lane keep assist. It's going to be this button where my thumb's at. So when you select that, you see an icon right up here to let you know it's available. All right, so you can use it. Now when it's actively working, that icon will turn green and then you get green lines right up here to let you know. So what does it do? Well, your traffic jam assist works between 25 to 45 miles an hour, while your lane keep assist works between 45 to 90 miles an hour. That's going what keeps you in the center of your lane. So for example, as you're driving down the road, you go whoop, a little bit out of your lane, right? It'll beep at you, beep, 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 beep. You can turn that on or off. Gives you a little visual, says lane departure, then brings you back and puts you back in the center of your lane. You would not be playing ping pong, all right? Going back and forth, getting motion sickness and all that. So once again, when it's actively working, you get a visual cue from white to green light to let you know, hey, I'm working. We'll keep you in the center of your lane for those long journey drives. It makes it a lot more comfortable. Now this one right here is gonna be for your cruise and then your adaptive cruise. When you hit this button, you get two different icons you'll see. First one you'll see is your adaptive cruise. You have a car with a speedometer, arrows like it's locking in its speed or you'll have this one to be your standard cruise. So your adaptive cruise control is going to be what keeps you at sync with the car in front of you. So for example, let's say you're going 45 miles an hour, the car in front is going 43, you can select the distance. As you see, it's going to be this right there. I'll show you the button here in a second. So depending on that, further away is more lines, closer to be less lines from there. All right. So let's say you're going 45, the car in front is going 43, it slows you down to maintain that distance. Once they get out of the way, whoop, you resume back to your cruise control speed. Now to select the distance, it's gonna be this button right here. As you tap this, it's a tap, tap, tap a -roo. There we go, you're selecting the distance. Now to switch between the two, if you don't like the adaptive cruise, that's fine. They made it easy. Simply click and hold that. And there we are. Now, once it's actively working, once again, you go from a white icon to a green icon to let you know, hey, I'm actively working. So you have a visual cue. Now, to set your cruise control, you have this little toggle switch right here. You can toggle down to set, and you toggle up and down once it's set to increase and decrease your speed. Now, we're going to have paddle shifters here. So when you're in sport mode, you can up and down shift as you guys see fit. You got your wipers. It can be adjustable and wipers. So you can increase the speed of those, decrease the speed of those. Pull back to mist. You get your rear wipers right here. It's a little twist once again. Uh, to miss these bad boys, you see the line right there. You see what's selected. Now we'll come right over here to your lights. You got auto lights. If you're sitting put right there at dark, you know it's nighttime, and you want to turn off your daytime running lights while the vehicle's on, so you have no lights on, you simply just got to flip to off, and then all of your lights will be off while the vehicle is in park. All right. You can have fog lights down here below. You can see they're off. You can turn them on from right there. Now we're gonna come over here. We got some more media controls. So you got your volume control increase and decrease down the toggle switch. You get your different sources. If the radio's on, you can switch between your sources. You got your voice commands. If my phone's paired, be like, hey, call crazy Honda Chris on mobile phone, things like that. And we have a little wiggle action. We'll get to that in a second. And then you can skip between your radio stations. And you have a home button to actually back out here on the driver's interface on the left-hand side. So we're gonna take a moment. We're gonna talk about the stuff here on the left-hand side and on the wheel. So to navigate through this stuff like I am right now, I'm just scrolling up and down on the wheel and then I push in the wheel to select those items and then to back out, I just hit the home button. All right, that's this right here where my thumb's at. So since we're here on maintenance, let's start with maintenance. As I push in the wheel, you'll see kind of more maintenance stuff than any recommended maintenance that needs to be done. If it recommends anything, it'd be right up there for you. Select the home button, we'll back out. Come right down to tire pressure. I'm pushing the wheel again. So you can see what tire has what kind of tire pressures going on. Hit the home button. And there we go, you guys get the point. So you got your safety support. So as you scroll down, you can see some options right here. You can disable your road departure, your blind spot information, and then your forward collision if you want to. Now as I start uh, to deselect or unselect some of these items, you'll see this icon down here is changing colors. So everything's off, everything's gray. A partial of it is enabled and some's not, it'd be as you see. Excuse me. Then if everything's enabled, it's all greened out, okay? 
Now we don't go down to no content, as you can see right here. If you want to switch from miles per hour to kilometers, this would be pretty nice and easy. You just gotta push in that wheel action. Then it's just made the switch. You can see it right up there and we switch it right back, okay? At the home, we'll come down to brightness. You can adjust the brightness of your driver's interface. To set it, you just simply hit the set button in, scroll up and down to go to where you want. Vehicle settings, I'll have a video later on for that. Right now you can see it's driver one that was selected. You can customize it between driver one and driver two. But this is where you can customize all of your vehicle settings when the doors unlock and when the car locks and stuff like that. All right, all the video later on. So please feel free to check that out. Gauge display. You can clean some of this up. Maybe you don't want everything displaying over here on this, you know, option. You want to reduce some of these or have everything enabled, you can. So if I don't want the all-wheel all -wheel drive torque, if I can talk, to display, I just push in the wheel and then it goes unchecked, it won't pop up. But we're going to keep everything enabled for the video. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm a little thirsty, all this talking and stuff. Okay, so now we've got a warning. So if the doors and stuff is open, you'll get a little warning action up here. Maybe someone's not buckled up. Fuel and range. So right now with a full tank of gas, it's estimated to go 393 miles. And that's based on four miles worth of driving. All right, that's all computer generated. It's all gonna be change. It's gonna be different for everyone. So it's gonna learn from your guys' driving habits. What kind of driving are you doing? Is it flat? Is it hills, mountains? Are you aggressive? You know, it's things like that, okay? So the computer learns from you and gives you a good little estimate range so you can plan accordingly. Now with the low wheel action, if I scroll up and down on this bad boy, as you can see, you have a trip A and trip B down below. Trip B, trip A, to reset one of these bad boys, you just push in the wheel and you scroll up to reset. So that's how you reset your trip A and trip B, okay? Now you have a graph down here, it shows between zero to 50. That's gonna show what you get for your lifetime fuel economy. So that graph's gonna fluctuate as you're driving. And also you're gonna get a green light that's gonna be right up here to let you know, hey, you're being fuel efficient, and when you're not, it just goes away. So get a little visual coach. Wanna back up, speed and time. Driver's attention monitoring system. The car knows when you're doing a really bad job at driving. We'll give you a little red one bar down here. It's gonna encourage you to pull over and take a break versus when the wind is just blowing you around. All-wheel drive torque is going to show you well where all the power is going as you get it and lifetime feed. So there we go. Wow, I'm struggling now for some reason. Seat belts. You can see who's sitting where and not wearing a seat belt. You can see I'm guilty right now. I have a red X. Um, so I'm sitting there. Don't have a seat belt on. Gray's no one sitting there. So if I grab the front passenger seat and buckle it in right now, you can see the little green. So that person is buckled up. Then we're back to maintenance. Now we're gonna talk about the layout here quick of the driver's interface screen, right? So you're gonna have your speed, and then you have a digital speed. We already talked about the safety features. You can see when they're enabled. So right now they're available. Now they're no longer available. Now they are. You can see what drive mode you're in. We're gonna to talk to that in a second, but right now it's in normal, miles on the vehicle. You got your gas tank. We're looking at the bars, not the little red dot. It's the bars, okay? So it's a full tank of gas is how you read that. We're in park and it's 58 degrees outside right now. Now we'll come right over here. Right now it's 11.32 for the clock, and then you got your tachometer and then some more of those features right up there, okay? Temperature gauge for the coolant, and you don't have a gauge for that, but you'll have a light will come on. It will be a blue if it's cold, then red if it's hot. So you guys will see that. Now from here, we're gonna come over to the touch screen. So you got your music, power button to turn that on and off, volume to raise and lower that bad boy. You got a little tuner station right here so you can tune that or you can push that right in. And then you can find your radio stations a little quicker by scrolling or you can use the touch screen. Let's say you find a radio station you like to save it, you just click and hold. There you go, it beeped and there you go, it saves it. So you can save up to 12 stations here on FM and AM radio. Now to switch between those options, you have the radio button right here. You simply select that, there's AM radio, and then FM. You can pair up your phone. You got multiple phones, but only one would be a priority. You can save favorite contacts. So as you're over here, you're actually going to be quicker to find those if you want to. And once your phone is paired, you can use your 
voice command. Hey, call Betty. See what Betty's up to. You can switch between radio stations right over here. Media option. Do you have a USB plug-in? You don't have a CD player in these newer cars now, but you can download stuff like books on tape, CDs, on a flash drive that's a USB. And then you can plug it in, and then you can find it right here. So it saves up all the clutter from CDs and stuff everywhere. All right? You hit media again. When you got Bluetooth capabilities. So if you have anything on your smartphone, you're set. Then we'll come back. You have your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto feature. It's a plug and play once again, all right? So you get the USB plug-in for your phone charger, plug it in your phone, plug it in down below, and then you can hit connect. It takes your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, takes your navigation and other compatible apps right up there for you guys and while charging your phone. So that's kind of cool. You can see the clock right up there. If you hit menu, you got a couple options. back out and there we go now just simply select the stuff if you guys want to explore this later on on your own you can you can actually touch everything on the touch screen now we're going to back up here quick we're going to take a moment to look at the dash where are the uh, 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 can talk adjustable vents whoo right over here for you guys and they have enough coffee so you got yours way over there we got a massive tray action here we're going to argue about these bad boys we got the hazard lights if you ever need them. Hopefully you never do. We got mine. That's open. Now I just closed it. Open. So pretty nice. Uh, one thing I kind of liked about this is going to be the nice little, I don't know, as I'm kind of playing around, I got a little ledge here to kind of rest my fingers as I book around stuff. I don't know. I feel like I need to assure that, but I did. Now we have orange stitching on the dash. An armrest. We already talked about that a little quick. We'll get to this here in a second. Now we'll come down to the center concert controls. You have heated seats on the front seats. You got high, medium, low, and off. Same with the passenger. That's gonna be tri-climate. Tri so you can accommodate for me, accommodate for whoever. From that point, and you have your R settings, rear settings, you can select that. You can accommodate for them too as well. I can turn that off. You see nothing's going on over there. I can sync it all now. So you got different modes right here. It's going to display right there for you guys. So as I'm selecting that, AC on or off, front defroster, rear defroster, air circulation, fan speed, I turn everything off, I hit the off button, and you have auto. If I select that, it's on auto, you see it. The car will do everything in its power to maintain that temperature right there for you guys, all right? We'll come down, you got a little tray action right here. You got a couple of USBs, you have a USB, USB-C, you have a 12 volt plug-in, a deep tray action right down there. Cup holders. We're gonna have your shifter. It's all gonna be push buttons. So as you're on the road, people can't just smack these bad boys. As you can see, you have to apply onto the brake pedal to shift. So simply put your foot down on the brake pedal. Right now we're in park. Pull that back towards you. That's gonna be reverse. As you're into reverse, you'll see it right up there. And then of course your multi-angle rear camera automatically displays. So the first one's gonna be a nice wide view. Catch just a little more of your blind spots from there. More directly right behind you view. Then a straight down shot from your rear bumper view. So as you're parallel parking, you see how close you're getting. Or if you're trying to get close enough to, you know, to hook up the hitch and all that, you're good. This button here is for on and off or a cross traffic bonding system. Right now it's on, but if I select it, it's gonna be crazy, so it's off. Cross traffic when it's on when the vehicle's in reverse and someone's coming from the side, it will point out what direction is coming from with an arrow then also alert you with an audible sound beep 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 as something's coming by okay so foot's on the brake you see we're in neutral drive and then you're going to have an s mode s mode is going to be for engine braking and a little more acceleration stuff like that we'll put it back in park now drive mode you have a little toggle switch you can toggle up and down at and you'll see what mode you're in by coming right over here on the driver's interface screen. So let's go all the way up to the top. You can have a sport mode, all right, for a little fun 
responsive uh, acceleration driving. Get a little red light up there to let you know, hey, you're in sport. Looking down to normal, this is your everyday driving. Econ's gonna make you more fuel efficient, most effective for your highway driving. All right, so you may see anywhere about a couple more miles to a gallon, depending on how aggressive you're driving. Now keep in mind when you have an Econ mode, uh, it affects the power of your acceleration, your AC power, and your electrical power, all right, to give you better highway fuel economy. You could keep this on all the time, it's just not very effective in your city driving. It's just hot summer days, I'm gonna choose to be comfortable. I don't like hot weather. Now we're going to come down to snow mode. It's going to change how the car is going to perform to optimize your handling in the snow environment. So if you definitely have an inch of city uh, snow out there, I definitely would encourage you guys to switch it. Um, another good common question before I move on is, Chris, can I toggle this as you're going? It's just don't have your foot on the accelerator as you're switching these. Okay? That's what I would recommend. Um, next one as we go down is it going to be a tow mode. So you're just prepping up for your kind of towing capabilities. And there we go. Back to normal. Idle stop is standard with these vehicles. For those that don't know what idle stop is, is that every time you get to a stop, the car meets its requirement. Like for example, long the temp is up to temp here from your climate. Your engine's not too cold or too hot, things like that. It will actually engage every single time. Long it meets the requirement so it won't burn out. <clears throat> so with that being said, when we get to a stop sign, drive through, you know, things like that, you put your foot down on the brake, psh, the car shuts off, it dies, as some would call it. It just partially shuts off the engine. When you take your foot off the brake, it starts right back up before you apply onto the gas. Whole point of that is not fuel economy, as some people advertise it, it's more about fuel emission awareness, all right? Um, so just throwing that out there. If you don't like it, hey, that's not a problem, just click this button, you'll see it's off right up there. Okay. You can see it's off from that little A with a circle and off, idle stops off. You have to do it every time you get into the vehicle. We have a logical parking brake, pull that right up. You see a little red light right there, it's engaged, it's engaged. To disable that, you simply have to apply it onto the brake pedal and push that right in. You have a hold brake, hold brake's gonna pretty much when that's enabled, I have to have my seatbelt plugged in. Um, you know what, let's do it here quick. Give me one second, guys. Plug in my seatbelt. There we go. Push that button in there. Now you'll see you have a hold brake is available. All right? So now if I put the vehicle into drive, it's holding the brake pedal right now. My foot was on the brake, no longer on the brake. We're in drive, holding. So now if I apply it to the gas, it releases it. Then once I get to a stop, because one stop for a moment, it holds the brake pedal down. So with a stop and go traffic, I don't have to keep my foot on the brake. All right, I can let it rest for those long journey drives. So pretty cool. We'll put it back in park. It's always available from that point. So I'm gonna just turn it off and there we go. We're gonna have hill descent control. And you tap that button, you get an icon down below. It's gonna try to lock you in between two to 12 miles an hour when you go down those steep hills. Armrests, we got one here to share. Open that right back up. I had a towel full of wiping down. And there we go. Deep storage area. I gotta hide all my snacks, my Oreos, whatever I want to hide from the kids, quarters, candy, and stuff like that. I can do it. I just long they don't watch this video, they don't know about it. Alright. So we're gonna come over here. It's gonna be a lockable glove box. Opens right up, deep enough, challenge accepted. You have plenty of space for whatever life brings at you. Challenge accepted. Pulls right back up from there. We're gonna have a mirror, a light, put that in the center. So if I open up a door, the lights come on. More light action, place for the sunglasses. Visors, adjustable. Hello. The mirrors. Well, there we are, guys. So that's pretty much going to be the pilot 
right here at the sport trim. Uh, nothing changed once again from 2023 to the 2025 year models. I know I never had the opportunity to do a video for the 23 and 24s, but this is all the same. So I won't let you guys know about that, okay? Uh, 25s, they definitely changed up the trim levels. They took away the LX um, from there and they added the black edition. Um, so yeah, they kind of did a little changes. All right, so at least for trims, what's gonna be available for you guys. Um, there it is. If you guys found this video helpful, please do me a huge favor. Hit the like and subscribe. It helps me out. I know I keep these videos going. And thank you again, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.